All right. Thank you, Julie. How's everyone doing today? Awesome. Uh, so I'm Maggie Miller. I um, oversee our omni-channel marketing at Delta Faucet Company. And I joined uh, Delta almost five years ago when we officially formed an e-commerce team. And so I've been really focused in that e-commerce space over the last five years or so. And so um, I'm excited to share with you kind of the evolution of where we've seen our brand media strategy go over the course of that time. Um, it's certainly been a journey, and so that'd be cool to open up just um, some other opportunities we're seeing besides the Amazon conversation, because I think we're all pretty well versed in what Amazon has to offer, um, but maybe not so aware of all of the opportunities that are happening on our retailer platforms. So just to give you a little bit of background, uh, Delta Fossa Company is owned by our parent company, Masco, which is a Fortune 500 company. We're sister companies with um, brands like Bear Paints, the Michael Phelps Spas, Craft Made Cabinets, et cetera. Um, we go to market with three specific brands. Um, Brizo is our luxury brand, and Delta Fossa is our like more um, mass market brand that you're probably aware of. And then Peerless is our uh, design on a budget brand we go to, to market with. And we play in um, these key categories that you're seeing here. So kitchen faucets, bathroom faucets, showering, uh, bathtubs, uh, shower walls, et cetera. And so um, what we're, we've really seen is an evolution in our uh, media strategy as a brand and a manufacturer. Um, so hopefully some of this kind of sounds familiar to a few of you. As I was listening to the panels previously, it certainly sounded familiar to me. So um, I hope you can take a couple of things away from it just to help you see that evolution in your strategy. Um, so at Delta, we don't do much um, direct to consumer. We only do a little bit for um, basically like repair parts for customer service. Um, so we really rely on our channel partners to be successful in the market. And so we go to market in really like three or four distinct channels. Um, one would be our plumbing wholesalers, our small like kitchen and bath dealers, your, your plumber. I've actually talked to a lot of you this week who are doing a bathroom renovation, you're talking to your plumber about what product to buy. So that's one of our channels. Um, also our commercial, thinking about hotels and apartment buildings um, and all that multifamily housing is, is a big part of our market. And then we've got our retail big box as well as our e-commerce channels. And so um, those, those partners are who we really rely on to be successful, um, which is why it creates kind of some unique challenges for those of us who don't go direct to consumer. Um, but we're starting to see that strategy evolve. So um, as in and on the e-commerce team, um, we've been investing in the Amazon platform um, and their, uh, their Amazon media group pretty heavily for the last um, three or so years. And so we've really seen an evolution of that strategy and starting to understand the impact that can have on our business and how critical it is to our e-commerce strategy. Um, but what we're seeing now is an evolution in having some more um, really control and visibility over the lower funnel activities that are happening at our retailers. So um, this might look familiar to a couple of you, but very basic foundational, our traditional brand media strategy has been extremely uh, top heavy. We're very focused in top of the funnel on our awareness or awareness and equity um, strategies. And so that looks like a lot of our, we've got TV, we're still doing print. Um, we have our online video, our social, um, and some of the display as well. But it's very, very focused on awareness and equity. And so as the consumer moves further down the funnel, we're really reliant on um, some of the tactics like our merchandising, um, store associates, um, showroom associates, and like a, a Ferguson type of showroom um, to really be our advocates to really convert to sales. So our, our shelf placement and our merchandising were really on, the only um, options we had when it got lower funnel. And so we really saw kind of a gap in what we were able to do from the media side because we don't have access um, from a first party perspective to the, the customer at that level. Um, and we're still really evolving our CRM strategy and thinking about that, what that means for a brand like a faucet. Uh, so what we're seeing is that our retailers um, have really found that the value that they have um, in their first party data is extremely, extremely valuable. Um, so much so that they are creating additional revenue streams for their companies based on that. Um, but that's okay. I think what we're seeing is that that strategy um, is a really a great partnership opportunity for us. 
Um, it certainly takes a lot of evolution, but kind of the mentality of with, with our powers combined, as we um, partner with them on these opportunities, we can have a much more full funnel strategy. So I think what we're really feeling is as the consumer journey has shifted, as you're all aware, the majority of that research and consideration is happening online and there's just simply so much inventory that we don't have the ability to capture it all if we just rely on our retailer and we don't have the access to see those signals to know exactly um, when they are shopping in market, in our categories, purchasing things that, that indicate that they're doing a renovation project um, and really searching um, for our direct keywords. And so this isn't meant to be a really exhaustive list of everything um, that we're seeing. But just to give you kind of an idea of the, the other retailer media opportunities that we're being presented with and are participating in directly with our retailer platforms, um, such as Home Depot, Wayfair, Walmart, um, even Target, are really evolving our strategy. And so we're seeing things with in-market display, um, a lot of the actual monetization of their platforms through sponsored products, banners, um, really leveraging some of the email tactics and having a, a larger say in what that looks like for us. Um, and some of, some of them are still doing some direct mail pieces with really that design mentality. And so we're seeing these as, as a way to start to evolve our strategy to look, well, a little bit more full so that we um, can fill out the bottom of our funnel with a better media presence. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's perfect yet. We've got a lot of work to still do, um, but we're continuing to build this and evolve it. Um, as a brand who's had a large top funnel uh, presence for uh, decades, that's still going to continue to be our strategy. There's a big investment there, and I think it's, it's the right thing to do. Um, so we're still really heavily invested in top funnel tactics that are they're bringing consumers in market and building that equity for Delta when they do come to purchase um, in their renovation, their plumbing fixture space. Um, but we're really being able to rely on our retailers in market signaling and capabilities to keep Delta front and center when a consumer is researching on one of those platforms. Um, and leveraging some of the retargeting and dynamic media um, and sponsor products to really help drive conversion on those sites. So we're seeing it, it takes a lot more um, investment and a lot more resources uh, internally to be able to pull this off, but I think in the long run, it, it really is the right strategy for us to um, be able to partner with the retailers at this level. So I thought I would share just a couple of pieces of our strategy at a very high level. Um, on the left, you can just see a couple of examples of what this looks like for us. Um, but for us, and I thought Eric at Scott's did a really good job of kind of explaining this, one of the, the things um, we're all looking at is our ROAS number, um, but we're starting to find that just focusing on that number for efficiency isn't necessarily going to drive incremental sales. And so we've had to start um, really balancing that efficiency metric with some other metrics to, to really figure out what's driving um, incremental growth on these platforms. I think we saw phenomenal growth for several years and now it's starting to get a little bit more even. And so we're having to get a lot more disciplined and focused in our measurement tactics and really figuring out what's doing the right thing um, to grow in this space because everything we're doing on these platforms is only to be driving sales for a performance marketing strategy. Um, so like most of you, we're not gonna have the budget to do everything we wanna do. And so as we still have um, a big investment in our brand awareness up at the top funnel, we think we have that covered pretty well. So we're building our investment strategy really from the bottom up and focusing on conversion tactics first, um, and then working to kind of meet in the middle with our brand awareness strategy. Um, as you are all aware, uh, we're getting new opportunities probably coming across our desk at least once a month about new things that are available that we can try. So we really try to keep a part of our budget uh, open to testing and doing those things um, every year and, and being able to have that opportunity so we can get there first and try and test and learn and see how it works. Um, and I know this is a big conversation. I think it's a panel tomorrow as well. Um, but all of these, really the performance marketing or acquisition marketing down at the bottom of the funnel, we're managing that internally um, through a team and really leveraging some software to, to build on some of the APIs. But I think this has been a really important part of our strategy because of how critical this is to our e-commerce performance. Um, we're able to be really agile and flexible with what we're seeing in terms of um, in-stock rates and um, 
profitability and which products are on sale and being able to really adjust our strategies really quickly. Um, so it's been a successful strategy to date, not to say I'm not open to it, but um, we really enjoy having that capability internally and relying just on kind of consulting perspective from outside agencies. Um, and so finally, I thought I'd just share a couple of things uh, we learned and that's all I have. So um, for us, educating our internal le leadership is critical to this evolution. Um, they really, like you guys probably all know, they have no idea what I'm talking about. And so um, I don't know about you, but I'm not gonna get any additional money if they don't know what this is. And so we spent a lot of time really educating um, about why this is so critical to our e-commerce strategy and what it looks like um, and really explaining how it works because oftentimes they don't even realize some of these placements are ads. And so we're trying to really um, educate our, our internal leadership to help evolve our strategy and get that additional investment that we need. Um, the second one, I saw some retailers come to market with some um, opportunities this year that did not even have click-through attribution. They were just relying on view-through attribution. And from our perspective, at this low in the funnel, we're really good at targeting the right people. And so we don't want to rely just on an impression level. We want to see what that's actually driving from a click-through perspective. Um, so we found to make sure we're really pushing hard to, to get that or ensure that that's something they're developing. Um, for us today, sponsored products really is um, what's driving the closest correlation to our sales growth. So we, we put a lot of investment in time there, um, but that's not to say it couldn't change in the, in the near future. Um, I think that's probably what we're just most comfortable with, but it, it is a really um, high conversion and high traffic driver for us as sponsored products. Um, I think um, for a brand and a manufacturer like us, building out that analytics capability is a big journey and there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, we have, of course, our brand media that's up top, and then we also have great POS data from our retailers, um, great e-commerce data on our traffic and our conversion from our e-commerce partners, um, and we also have great metrics for all of um, these retail placements that we're, we're buying. But tying that all together is a really big evolution, and we're certainly not there yet. If anybody has any great ideas, please come talk to me, <laughs> um, because we, th we think we have a lot of room to grow in that space. And then finally, um, because all these things are so new and coming to market so quickly, there's some times where they don't always work perfectly, um, and there's some areas that, that maybe have some bugs or some snags, and I would just say don't let that scare you off from um, really taking a look and investing in those types of areas and just being upfront with your retailers about what those um, room for improvement areas are because I found they really want to build a great product and so they're taking that, that feedback to heart um, and, are, and are really building it to adjust to what they're he hearing from their, their brands. Um, so that is really all I had to share with you today. Hopefully I shed some light on kind of this new space that we think is evolving um, or at least raise my hand to say I'm somebody else who's walking through this. So if you um, want to talk with me afterwards, I think that'd be great. So thank you so much for listening. Well, thanks, Maggie. Anyone have any questions? <laughs> Actually, I just wanted to, because just from our conversation earlier, um, and you mm -hmm. talked about, I mean, I know you're heavily, your spend for Amazon has been pretty heavy, but mm -hmm. now that you are focusing more on the lower funnel and conversions, was that what directed you towards looking more at these other opportunities with your retailers? I would say they probably came to us. Um, we're a pretty strategic vendor partner for a lot of these retailers. Um, and so when they came to us, we knew how successful these, these um, activities could be on the Amazon platform. And so we saw a lot of opportunity to really dig in and figure this out with our retailers. And so I think because of that experience, it led us to want to invest with our retailers in a big way because we think that's um, a really big opportunity area. Great, anyone else with questions? Okay, well, 